Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Full Charge Gaming. My name is Jover Charge, and I am here to charge up your gameplay with Hacknet. We are continuing where we left off, and today we're going to learn about EOS devices. So what's going on here is when you type in the word scan and you scan PCs, you can type in the word scan and it'll show terminals that are connected to your PC. Now what's going on is when we learn the EOS device scan command, it's gonna show us mobile devices that are connected to any PC we are connected to. What we need to do is we need to go and get a fresh copy of the EOS command system. So let's go to our bin and here it is EOS device scan. So we're gonna type SCP EOS device scan and that's gonna allow us to acquire this command. If you type in EXE, you can see all the commands you can use. We have an EOS device scan, FTP bounce and SSH crack. Now what's gonna happen is we need to log into this guy's PowerBook Plus which is here. Now we can't scan because we're not the admin yet. So we have to get admin privileges first. So let's probe it and see what we can do. Okay, we just need to crack through two ports in order to get in. So we can use any combination that we want to get through these ports. We just need to get through two. So let's do that. And once you get through both of those, simply run your port hack command and this will give us admin access to this PC. So now that we're the admin, we can scan, but there's no computers connect to this one, but with EOS device scan, we can now scan for mobile devices. So we're gonna let that command run and it's gonna scan any mobile device connected to this IP address. All right, so we found Jason's phone. It's an ePhone 4S and it's right here. So when we click on it, we can't necessarily probe in because we don't have enough ports, but here's the trick. When you open up your email, what they're gonna tell you here is that any EOS device can be logged in by using admin and then Alpine. This is really important and this will carry you for the rest of the game. Any EOS device that you wanna get into, simply use admin and Alpine to log in. So what we're gonna do is go back to Jason's phone and we're gonna try to just log in. Simply use admin and type in Alpine and now we're logged in. And this mission is asking us to find the password for his email address. So we're gonna look around, see if we can find anything of use. Hmm, mail maybe? Ah, here we go, right here. Mail account, jjstacks at jmail, and his password is tintin7. That's the password to his email account. So all we need to do is back out, make sure we remove the logs, disconnect. Then we're gonna go over to email, go to reply and use the password that we got and send it back. All right, the next mission we're gonna do is called the XC Project. Now this one is one of the stranger quests you have to do. It basically is look through someone's computer system and identify personal files and send the project ID to this email address. They think that this person is using their tablet for personal purposes. We have to basically find a personal file, find the project ID and send it back. So let's click on this button to get access to their project tablet. And here it is. And let's probe to get in. And they do have a proxy, no problem. We'll go and grab a couple PCs to give us shell capabilities. And we're gonna try to log back in and we are going to use the overload command. And now we're gonna start overloading the proxy. All right, and once that's done, we can simply try to hack any port that we can. At this point, we can only get through SSH, FTP, or SMTPs. Now that we're in, this is the strange part of the mission. As you can see, there are some very strange articles in this person's tablet relating to technology and various projects that they're working on. There's flight computers, there's laser rifles and all this various stuff. But there is a file called personal and this is still alien in nature. But this particular document was under the personal folder. So this is something that might not be work related. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this project ID. This is the one in question. So we're gonna take 4991. Make sure to clear your logs before you leave. RM star and then DC. We're gonna go back to our mail and we're going to email the project ID in this email. When we send that in, we are able to get completion of this quest. And now we've hit our ranking of one out of 100, and this is where we receive an interesting quest here. So this mission's called Aggression Must Be Punished. And what's going on here is a talented hacker by the name of Nikes has been a bit over aggressive. He claims to have recently stolen a great deal of internal data from Microsoft. 
Our mission is to go into his computer, delete what he stole. They gave us the IP address and they give us a new program that will allow us to do that. So that new program is the smtpoverflow.exe program. So you will need that program. Simply click on the asset server, go to your file system, and in the bin folder you can now see that there's an SMTP overflow. Use SCP to grab that SMTP overflow, and this will give us another means of hacking ports. Now let's go into this server and see if we can get in. Now we're gonna probe the system. Yes, there's a proxy. We're gonna overload that proxy, and that's gonna trigger a trace. Then we're gonna use three different methods of hacking ports now. We have FTP bounce, we have SSH crack, and now we have the SMTP overflow. So we're gonna hack ports 22, 21, and 25. So you run them one after another without going over memory. And once we hit three, we are going to run the port hack command to actually log in. All right, now that we're in, we're gonna view the file system Here's his Microsoft internal raid archive.rar. It's under the home folder. Now, after we delete this folder, we are going to be counter hacked. And I'm going to show you guys two ways to deal with it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove that file there. It's now gone. We can delete the logs if we want to, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. So here's what's going to happen. He's going to send us an email saying, are you kidding me? He's going to come into our server and delete it. Now I'm gonna let it happen, but there's a quick, easy way to get away from this. So it's gonna start happening any second. What you could easily do to get rid of this from happening is to use the trap option on any one of your shells. And you have enough time to actually open a shell and run trap, but we're just gonna let it happen and I'll just show you guys how to interact with this. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna start flooding our I guess it's gonna start flooding our RAM banks, and as soon as our RAM tops out, our computer will crash. And then we get this crazy good blue screen of death, and what we could have done, like I said, was we could have run the trap command there. But since we didn't, it's gonna actually cycle through all of its boot sequences, but it's gonna come to a point where it can't, and you guys will see it right here. Error, unable to load system file xserver.sys this file was deleted. So what you now have to do is you now have to work using only text-based interface. There's no visualizer to let you know what computer you need to connect to. There's no sort of visual aid except for what you can type. So here's how you deal with it. Unable to load system file xserver.sys, locate and restore a valid xserver file in the sys folder to restore UX functionality. All right, so the game gives you some hints as to how to do this, but I'm going to show you pretty much what you need to do. When you list everything that's in your computer, you have home, log, bin, and sys. If we log into the sys folder and just list everything that's in there, you can see that there's an os-config sys file, there's a boot config dll file, and a net config x.dll file. We're missing the xserver.sys file. Now that's nowhere else on our computer. As you can tell, he deleted everything that was in there. We have some executable programs like our FTP bounce, SSH crack, those are all in there, but we have no way to boot from this computer, but we are connected to a computer that can. Remember the scan command. The scan will find various terminals that you are connected to. So what we need to do here is we need to connect to a neighboring IP address download their xserver.sys file and reboot. So that's what we're gonna do. As you can see, we're connected to a computer called Dangler Consortium. So we're gonna connect to that IP address. Type out connect 198.177.35.113 and now we're connected and we can list everything that's in there. Let's go into that SYS folder by typing CD SYS and seeing what's in there. There's a fresh xserver.sys file in there. So we're gonna use SCP to get that file. Transfer complete. And let's look at our own system here. We're gonna go CD SYS and look inside. There's the new xserver.sys file. And then all you need to do from here is just reboot. And now we are going to start the reboot sequence. And this is much like what you saw when the game started. When you get to the point where you need to load the xserver.sys file, it succeeds. And look, our interface is different now, but we were able to survive that hack by Nikes or Nix. 
but we can respond to the aggression must be punished. And we have succeeded. So that is how you reboot your PC after being hacked by Nikes. Now, like I said, you could have just done the trap command in one of the shells to avoid it also, but most people go through what we just did. So I feel like that was very important and now we can continue on with the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're gonna be playing more HackNet in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for more. If you guys have a particular quest you want me to cover, let me know in the comments down below. Until then guys, stay charged and we'll see you next time. Take care.